Hello, Leo. I hope you're having a really good day. This reading. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to bring the theme through with the animal deck. I saw these really weird animals, I think, when I was in the bath. I'm like, nice. The animals want to speak. Oh, Leo. Okay, a theme for Leo. Okay, so we got the chariot, the three of wands. Is that the five of swords? Oh, ooh, three of pentacles. And the elk. Ooh, the two of swords. Okay. I just read the Inquisitor. I don't know if somebody's like asking questions. That's what an Inquisitor does. It inquires. I.e. asking for information. So maybe you're asking for information on something. And Leo, I got you. Okay, so Dragon Eye. That's the chariot. Three of Wands. Three of Pentacles. Hierophant. Emperor. Two of Swords. I like, okay, I took notice right away to these two cards being together. And then plus they're both threes. So three and three and these like little tiny, like the smallest things that you could find in the sky. Okay would be a bee and a firefly. And then we go from the smallest things to the leaders. All right. And then this like moment of pure terror to a source where you get stuck. Oh, I see. I feel like you're asking questions um, about are you, is this going to be big or is this going to be small? And I feel like your answer to, is this going to be big or is this going to be small? I feel like the answer is it's going to be big if you're ready to lead. And it's going to be small or stay small. Okay. Um, But even though it's small, it still might be someone's idea of big, right? Like not exactly something that's overly popular, but something that works, right? And, and that's the fire, like, I, I feel like this is like either you're going to go one way or the other way. And I think that's why... The tarantula is here because you do have to choose a direction to a swords. You do have to choose something if you don't want to stay blocked and if you want to move forward, right? And the dragon is all about moving forward. It's the chariot. It's one of the ether characters where it's like, okay, so now the magical dragon comes in to take you forward. And he's asking, okay, well, 
you'll still be just as bright, okay, but tiny, or you can be the leader of the pack, right? And really lead, like I'm talking like a family. So what I see is with the B, okay, we're talking B versus elk in the way that this person gets followers because like this elk is looking right at this wolf and this bee is looking right at the firefly and the firefly is looking at the bee. So it's almost like if you stay small, then majority of the people that are going to be feeding you, right? Like, like paying your bills, coming to the shop, doing stuff like that, right? They're like your little worker bees. It stays small, but it's lit up. Or you choose to run the pack. If you choose to run the pack, then that's employing people. That's becoming a true family. That's like you got your son, your daughter, your uncle, your aunt, and dad running the whole thing. That would be the elk. But the bees, right? The bees are like little people doing little things everywhere. Or big people doing big things in one place all together. And that's kind of scary, right? Like when you, when you decide, because you know, you're the one that has to decide if you want to leave the pack. You're the one that has to decide, do you want to be the manager? Do you want to open up your own store? Do you want to start your own thing? Right? And if so, then you're the one that has to take charge on it all. You're the one that has to make decisions, do the times, do the promoting, do the advertising, do the events, do everything you can, right? Which is the leader of the pack. That's the wolf. But the universe is like, you know, you can do it that way if you want to go big. Okay? Then that's like that's like starting a company somewhere in like one state and then branching out, right? And and becoming something more. Or do you stay small and do little things in little places? Cuz like it's like the dragon wants to take you somewhere. But you have to decide, right? You have to decide where you want to go. Now I'm getting Pharrell again. I'm a hustler, baby. And then where have I been? Where I'm about to go? I just want to love you. And tell you who I am. With all this cash, forget your man. I don't know. Maybe someone's going to be making some money. Me and tarot. Oh, I just spilled my drink. My drink. Okay. Okay. So it seems like we got information on both sides here. So we got six of wands, queen of wands, death um, for the firefly side. So what I feel like is, I feel like, okay, so if you stay small, if you choose to do the smaller things, okay, work a little bit harder, be a little bit more there, not become like the boss man that like, you know, is too cool for school. Um, 
that is then, you know, that, that way of doing things is very lucrative and very fair to the ones around you. Right. It's, but it's, and I feel like there's room to change things, right? Like you can, you can kind of transition, um, if you stay small, right? That means that there's a lot more things that you can change at your own will, right? And still be fair to everybody around you. Now, if you choose to go big, okay, we got this Eight of Swords, um, Aquarius here, and the world. I just got some anxiety for some reason. Which I'm guessing this is what this Eight of Swords is about. Okay, so this one, this message is a little bit, okay, so if you decide to go big, okay, and you decide that, you know, you really want to lead the pack, you really want to take this idea and really, really expand on it and really get people in there that you trust and really build a pack, okay? Um... I think you're going to feel like that's really confining and that once you get your wish come true, then it's going to be over. And, you know, this brings me now to this fucking Tom McDonald. Okay. And to be honest, there are some songs I really like that he does and he's, you know, he's, if you don't know who he is, he just, he, he does videos on YouTube. Okay. He, he's just, he was raps, but he has managed to do it in like this different way. Anyways, he puts up this video the other day and he says that he's done rapping, that he can, he can go no further with his career and that he's reached the top and he feels like that's all he can do. And like billboard won't give him any ranks and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, like, I get it. This guy's worked his ass off and Billboard won't give him a spot on the charts, even though he deserves a spot. But if you ain't going to give any money to the industry, he ain't going to get a spot in the industry. Okay, which means if you didn't sell your soul, sorry, but you can't be on the charts. Okay, that's just the way shit works. It's nothing personal, but he seems to take it personal. And, and because he's on the top of the ladder, he, he considers himself at the top of the ladder. He thinks he can go no further. And when I watched that video and then I watched him get teared up, I was like, buddy, grow up. Like, I, I mean, there's so many things that you can do. You don't just have to wham, wham, cry about it and be like, my whole life is done now. Like, that's such a, oh, like, it, that's such a frustrating thing to see on somebody because you're only at the top when you feel like you're at the top. Like, like who says you can't go further? Like, there's a whole fucking galaxy up there. Like, like just because you've got 20 million fucking views, it doesn't mean that your whole life's over and that you've got to the top. Like, does he even tour? Does he even go anywhere? Does he even do anything? Right? I'm not shit talking Tom McDonald. I'm talking about the situation. Like, you are the one who decides when you're on the top. Okay? So this person who feels like they're going to get too big and then the dream's going to be done is just bullshit. That's just you confining yourself to this by saying that you're going to end up stopping yourself once you get it all. But what is it all? Right? Like, can't you still find ways to do things? Like, I was like, man, say, if we go back to Tom McDonald, like, man, that guy can, like, coach people. That guy can, like, Nova's great at videos. Like, they can branch out. They can, they can get paid to make fucking videos. Like, that guy can, can coach little rappers. Like, you, there's so many things you can do. Like, why say you're at the top and cry about it? Like, like, it's just like, it's your own state of mind, right? It's not, I'm not shit talking anybody. I'm saying your own state of mind is where you choose to go. I'm just happy that when I see people that feel like they're done and they can't go anywhere, I'm glad that I can still see the expansion on their life, which means I'll always be able to expand where I am, right? Never put yourself in a box. 
because if you do, then that is the wish come true that will end it all, right? But dreams are endless. Goals are endless. This world is endless. You decide where you stop or the world stops you itself, right? But to put a, a, a cap on yourself or to say that suddenly you can't do something because you already been to the top. What's the top? I'm sorry. Wait a second. What's the top, right? If you can go no further with something, you're just at the end of the road. You're at the top of nothing, right? It's your own frame of mind towards something. And by, by putting a frame of mind on something, by saying something like you are on the top or you cannot go nowhere, you're just limiting yourself. And you're limiting the possibilities of the road you could go down next thanks to the road you were just on, right? The way I see it, it's all about frame of mind. And I'm just using that, like, you know me, I, I use things as a nice analogy. I would like an analogy to things that I hear because I'm dyslexic. I, when somebody tells me something, I don't hear it the way that they say it all the time, right? Like I, I, I have to read things a couple times sometimes. If somebody says something out loud, like a directions, if I'm just hearing things, something out loud, like I, I'll never grasp it. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I got to see that shit. Like, I'm a hands-on kind of like, I need to see, I need to be in things, right? And, and I think that's where you either become the thinker or the doer, right? If, if you are thinking too much, you're never going to do anything. And if you overdo it, if you overkill it on yourself, then you get back into, oh my God, what am I going to do? And you get back into thinking again, paranoia, right? And it's like, you, you are the ones that have to control your own mind, right? Nobody else can do that for you. And actually today, because I'm trying to like, you know, me myself trying to like clear my mind and, and clear my thoughts. And I don't need anybody else running around up there. I, this is, I'm, you know, like I used to hide in my head a lot, right? Because I didn't want to be out in, in the world. It was too scary for me. And, and I went into my head. I went into my head the second I got touched and I never came out of it for like fucking 30 years. Now I'm not scared. I, I can have my mind completely unoccupied and blank and, and not feel anxiety over that right? Like you, you make your own bed, but out of the things that you survived, right? So as with this reading, it's like you are where you can go. You are your chariot. You are, you know, maybe, hey, maybe fuck catfish Billy here is taking you for a ride. You know what I mean? Like you are your own chariot. You're the one that decides where this energy is going to take you and where it's not. And if you want to clear your mind, then grab two, uh, well, I mean, this is one crystal that actually originally looked like this. It's just a selenite salt crystal, but because I put it in the bath so much, it, it broke into pieces. And uh, I put these on both sides of my temple and I cleared my head. So then I can make space for me. I can make space for my own thoughts so that I don't have to crawl into my head Every time I get scared, right? And like I noticed I was putting the dishes away because I was starting to cook dinner and I was putting the dishes away from the counter and I was like doing them all soft. And then my subconscious had to stop me to be like, why are you putting the dishes so quietly away? Like it was just my sister in the next room watching a TV show. I, I could hear everything. She's got it cranked in the living room, right? So, and then I realized I'm still putting the dishes away quietly because... 20 years ago, I was forced to put the dishes away every day after school, but my father was sleeping. And if I woke him up, he came downstairs, screamed bloody murder at us and would ground us instantly if we woke him up because he was so angry all the time that he would, he would get violent. Like he would shove us around. He would scream. He would slam the doors and be like, how do you like it? I'm banging it. And he'd start banging the dishes and shit. Like if we woke him up. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still PTSD. Like you might have PTSD through the night. You have to like, if you find yourself in a situation where you're doing something, where you feel like you have to cater for something, like clearly I felt like my sister was going to get mad at me for cleaning the dishes. And I went, oh my God, Courtney, I'm still putting them away. Like she lived in the same house. I was like, do you remember when we had to put the dishes away all the time? Like only after school when he was sleeping, like, why couldn't we do it once he got up? Like we had to do it. They told us we had to do it as soon as we got home. And, and 
It was just, it was one of those things, like one of those bells that you could ring just to piss off a demon, right? And I know my dad sleeps with a demon. He's got a demon in him. He's always had a demon in him, right? It was given to him by his mother. It's disgusting. But like by, by putting that stress on children to keep a parent happy, right? You can stem that into your adulthood very easily. So you could be thinking, if I make it to the top, that's it. I've got nothing after that. The dream is over. But that's just you limiting yourself because of everything that's been limited around you, right? Like the things that were taken away from you, the way that you probably couldn't really be a human, right? That's what's making you think that once you get it all, you're not going to want it anymore. And that's, that's Lucifer in your back himself. That's, that's something telling you that you don't deserve something when really you do. But the funny thing is, is that a lot of people feel like they have to do things big and huge when really they could have just stayed small, right? Like not everybody's million dollar dream is the same, right? Not everybody's retirement fund is the same, right? People live differently. Not everybody feels the same way. So doing something small, yes, it might be tiny, but you're still glowing. You're still radiating. It's still, it's, it's still, um, fair in this whole world of injustice even small it's fair so no matter how you're going to do it it's just whether or not you're going to limit yourself to the possibilities you could do or if you're going to keep it small and practical transitional and always able to adapt and evolve where to go leo I feel like the true connection is to do the big thing, but I am not you. I am not you. Peace out.